So in total, there will be four stereoisomers for this one molecule. For this one structural formula, there will be four stereoisomers because 2 plus 2 is 4. Now, we can have another isomer. this one one two three four five so you can see that this time there is a chlorine on the second and on the fourth carbon atoms and again both of them are chiral centers because attached to four different groups so both of them will have two optical isomers each and hence total four optical isomers so this will become Now, let's move on to the branched isomers for this one. So, let's have a four carbon chain. And let's see, there's a methyl group on this one. There is a chlorine here and a chlorine here. So, this one, so in this one, if you count the number of carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, uh, I'm sorry about that. Four. So you can see that in any case the longest chain has four carbon atoms in it. So and in any case there, there is a methyl group on the third carbon atom and two chlorine atoms on the first carbon atom. So this will become one one dichloro. Two methyl. Actually, there, there will not be a comma. There will not be a comma over here. One one dichloro. Two methyl. So not two methyl. Three methyl because the methyl group is on the third carbon atom. So three methyl. Butane because the longest chain has four carbon atoms. So let's see how we derive the name for this isomer. It will be 1,1 one, one dichloro because there is there are two chlorine atoms, so dichloro, and both of them are on the one first carbon atom, so 1 and 1. And then 3-methyl because there is a methyl group on the third carbon atom. And butane because the longest carbon chain has four carbon atoms in any case. So 1,1 one, one dichloro, 3-methyl butane. So you can see how we can make several isomers using, using, using just one Mole uh, molecular formula because the chlorines can be placed anywhere then the methyl can be placed anywhere then you can even have a three carbon atom chain so you can so i'm not going to waste your time making all the isomers but you should have a clear idea of how we think about these isomers and how we make them so uh this is how we do isomerism and if you can count if you count the total number of structural isomers you will not include include these into twos and into fours because obviously if you see, uh, the, uh, structural, the uh, structural isomers and stereoisomers are different. So if you are only talking about structural isomers, you will include all of them individually. If you are talking about the total number of structural and stereoisomers, then you will include the into twos as well. So you can make several more isomers for this, but I am not going that much into detail. My, my basic, I, would, I just wanted to show you the basic idea of how to make these isomers and of how to think while making isomers. So we are done with this one, now let's move further. So elimination reactions. Now halogenoalkanes undergo something called elimination in which they lose the halogen, the, they lose the halogen atom and they lose the hydrogen atom on the adjacent carbon atom. So what I mean by this is, for example you have chloroethane in this example. So what happens is that uh, when you, when this undergoes an elimination reaction, the chlorine atom will be removed from this carbon and the hydrogen atom will be removed from the adjacent carbon atom. So as you can see over here, uh, this becomes ethene upon undergoing dehydration because, uh, not dehydration, sorry, elimination, don't get confused, this is an elimination reaction. So this gets, uh, so this becomes ethene upon elimination because the chlorine is removed from this carbon atom leaving CH2 and the hydrogen is uh, is is eliminated from this carbon atom leaving ch2 again 
So CH2 is double bonded to CH2 which because carbon double bonded to carbon. So an alkene is formed upon eliminating the chlorine atom and you get